Hi folks, good to be with you. Carrying on the sermon. <coughs> Sorry. Hi folks, it's good to be with you. We're carrying on our sermon uh, on Colossians chapter 3. The camera went dead uh, on that last video. Uh, so we're carrying our, our, our sermon on uh, Colossians chapter 3. And uh, we're talking about bitterness. Uh, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com. You can get me on Facebook and Twitter. Um, it's good to be with you and we're in the second part of the sermon and we was looking at bitterness we looked at Matthew chapter 6 verse 12, 14, 15 Matthew 18, 21, 22 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 and we looked at a forgiveness that we, we have to forgive Ephesians 4, 32 Ephesians 4.32 Ephesians 4.32 And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for, God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. got to be tender hearted and forgiving doesn't matter how long ago it was if you're nursing bitterness forgive them it doesn't matter how much they hurt you forgive them because that is the father's will for you and if you do that you'll set yourself free and you'll set them free but be forgiven be warm hearted and be merciful be kind So we're to be like Christ, we're to be humble, we're to forgive, we're to be loving. Verse 14, Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. We're to put on charity. We're to put on the love of Christ. And that love can be found in John, John thir 13. John 13, 1 to 11. Now therefore the feast of the Passover... When the Jews knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, and Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. And after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherein he was girded. So he washed the disciples' feet. He, he was so humble and gracious and loving. It was costly love where it stooped down to help others and that is the love that he wants you and I to have the humility the forgiveness and the love and then we're to have peace Colossians Colossians uh, 15 and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to that which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful, we're to be thankful and we're to be peacemakers. If you're always arguing all the time in your house, you're going to create division, but you've got to be a peacemaker, looking for the best in people and, and, and try to bring peace 
and the peace of God in, in your situation. And then verse 16, Colossians 3.16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You need to be first of all here uh, meditating on the word of God regularly. Go to Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written, for there shall make thy way prosperous, and then shall have good success. So you're to, my friend, you're to meditate on the word of God regularly. Psalm 1, look at Psalm 1. Be a meditator of the word of God. Meditate much on the word of God. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a, a, a tree planted with rivers of waters that bringeth forth the fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the God ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So, so my friend, it, the, um, we're to meditate much on the word of God. Uh, and we're to be humble, we're to not have any bitterness, we're to be loving, we're to meditate on the Word of God, and we're to pray, as it says in, in our passage in Colossians 3, that last v bit of the verse, admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, singing praises to God, worshipping God, We'll bring that peace and we'll bring that forgiveness spirit. We'll bring that loving attitude. Praising God, worshipping Him. We'll melt away things that are not right in our lives. So we're like Christ. We, 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 we be like Christ. And then finally, work your new life out in your situation when a nurse trains she that she would get a training and she would learn to be a nurse and then she's put on a and e and suddenly patients are coming in with broken bones and people dying and all sorts of things and the training that the nurse has has to put it into practice we've had the training paul has given us the training we're to be heavenly minded think of spiritual things we're to cut out sin. Anything not right, not right, we're to cut it out. We're to bear fruit in the Spirit. Looking to be like Christ in humility. Looking to be like Christ in love. Looking to be like Christ in forgiveness. Looking to be like Christ in filling our minds with the Word. And praising the Father. But now we put it into practice. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 18 to 25. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit. In the Lord, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Unto the Lord, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters, according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. 
Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. You serve the Lord Christ. You serve the Lord Christ. So wives, verse 18, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit unto in the Lord. As a wife, your husband needs you to look up to him. Your husband needs you to support him. Your husband needs you to encourage him. But if you're nagging at him, if you're pulling him down all the time, if you're always uh, pushing your will over his will, you're going to break your husband and you're going to crush your husband. You, the one thing to make a man flourish is to let him know that he, he's a man and so you to encourage him and to lift him up and to honour him before everybody to say, no, this is my man and I look up to you, you are my man. You are the leader of my household. You're the leader of the family. And you look up to your husband. But if you don't do that, then you'll crush your husband. He won't know who he is. He won't know what he's to be doing. You'll always be undermining him. Verse 19, husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them. But that doesn't mean to say the husband gets to be the boss. Bossing all every time in the sense of just you got to do this and do that. No, no. Leadership means demonstrating love. You have to show that you're worthy of being looked up to. Worthy of being followed. By having sacrificial love. The love of Christ that stooped down to wash people's feet. You have to have that love for your wife. If she makes you a cup of tea, you make her two cups of tea. If she makes you a meal when you come home from work, you make her two meals when she comes home from work. You get what I'm saying? You are to show that love, that sacrificial love as a husband. But also, be not bitter against them. You are to be the leader of the household. And the leader means that you're the first one to say sorry. You know, it's childishness and it's boyishness. If a man holds a woman and says the woman is the guilty one. She might be guilty. She might be guilty 100%. But God has called you as a husband to forgive. And to forgive quickly and firstly. Yeah? He said, but, but she hurt me. She did this. She did that. She's in the wrong. You're just being a boy. That's boyishness. Being a man is, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's being a man. Okay? That's, that's standing up to your responsibility of being a father and being a husband. And you're taking the initiative so that there's peace in the house. Because you're the one who's willing to go the extra mile first and say I'm sorry. Okay? Now for those feminists out there who say, well I don't like all this teaching. Wives submit to your husbands and all the rest of it. And husbands have got to uh, be, lead first and, and, and be apologetic and all the rest. I, I don't like all this. I'm a feminist. And, uh, and you're out of date. Well, for your information, in Proverbs 21, there's a chapter there where women are praised. A woman is praised. You will not find a chapter where men are praised, but you find a chapter where women are pra praised. So... You can take your feminism and you can throw it over the garden wall because we don't have it here, okay? We're people of the book. We're people of the word of God. Yeah, if you want to be a, a secular feminist and secular culture, then you go and do it. Because I tell you what, no society today that stands on feminism and feminist ideology and feminist ways, that society, I guarantee, will not survive. It will crumble, okay? A society that follows the word of God will not crumble. And God's word clearly states the women are to submit to the men and the husbands are to love their wives and to not be bitter against them. That's what the scriptures say. 
So let's not try to twist the scripture now. Because we're brainwashed by our universities and colleges. We're brainwashed by our media. That uh, women and men are equal. And therefore the roles of men can be the same as women and women as men. No. Men and, men and women are equal. But women have a different role than men. Okay? And we see that here. That is God's plan. Right? So, feminism, out the window. Okay? We're not all about chauvinism. That is detestable to God. We're all about biblical marriage, biblical relationship. That is biblical. Right? And so many people today flagrantly disregard the word of God they try to water it down with the secular culture. They try to water it down and make it palatable to the secular mindset. And it stinks to high heaven because it's not of the word of God. It's not honouring God. It's not honourable to, uh, uh, to have a woman bossing her husband around and criticizing her husband at church in front of everybody making her husband look an idiot that is not honorable to god it's not honorable to god to see a man bossing his wife about so much that he doesn't show any love to her and he abuses her with with his authority that's not honorable to god but it's not honorable to god for men to walk around as if the mice as if they ain't men, because political correctness has emasculated them. That's not honourable. It's honourable for a man to be a man and a woman to be a woman. Let not the devil and his evil spirits, let not this secular culture blind you to the wonders of God's word and the wonders of his wisdom. And he and she who obeys the word of God in this area will be blessed by God. And God will honour such a marriage. For they honour his word. Then it says, children obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. I know that your parents do your ready. Yes, I know, I know. Do they say oh, you do this, do that, and oh, you're fed up of it, and, and you want to be free, but they tell you to do this, to, to do that, to do that, to do this, and you don't like it. I know. I know you're not happy about it. I wasn't happy when I was a kid. I didn't like it. Do this, do that, do this, do that. Oh, it's it's hard work, isn't it, being a kid? So, so why should you do it? Because the Lord tells you. Because you're his child, you become saved, you come to know the Lord. And the, to please the Lord, he wants you to be a good child and obey your parents. You only obey your parents if they do things right. If they tell you to do something evil, then you don't obey your parents. But generally speaking, go and cleaning your room is nothing to do about good and evil. It's something practical that you need to go and do. Tying up your shoelaces is something practical that you need to do. Eating your dinner is something practical that you need to do. Getting out to school on time is something practical you need to do. Talking to your elders in a, in a respectful way is something practical you need to do. If you're going to get on in life and your parents are trying to help you. So it's no good putting your hand in your in your pockets and going, mm, 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 I'm fed up. You need to learn these things. And your parents are trying to help you. Now your parents might not be perfect. Your parents might have made mistakes. But you've still got to love them. still got to be respectful to them. And still realise in years to come, you'll look on and you'll say, you know what? I realise why my mum said this. I realise why my dad said this. You might not realise it now, but you'll realise it in years to come. So just bite your teeth and do as you're told. Why?
because the Lord wants you to do it. Verse 21, fathers provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. As a father, you can crush your children if you're too hard on them. So many, pe so many children leave the Christian faith because the parents rammed the Christianity down the child's throat. It's too much. That you just put your kids off. You've got to be wise and balanced in your way you bring your kids up. Don't bring them up in a too harsh a way. Verse 22. Servants obey all, uh, in all things your masters according to the flesh. Not with eye servants as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. That means when you're at work and people are skiving, you don't skive. You keep working till your break time comes. Because you're doing it for the Lord. It means when you're a boss, you don't bully your your the ones you've employed, you don't bully them, you show them respect because you're a Christian boss. Not a secular boss, you're a Christian boss. And you treat people fairly. So, turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, 25. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth it himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord the church, for we are members of the body of the flesh. This is a great mystery, for we are members of the body of his flesh and of his bone. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So we have another scripture, clear scripture, how a, 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 a marriage should be conducted. And those who want to get married, this is what we who want to get married must look up to, that we must be aiming at. Yes? Do we? So, let's go back to Colossians. We're nearly finished now. Colossians chapter 3. We'll go back to verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, seek the things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on these things above, not on things of the earth. You're a new creature in Christ. The old is gone and the new has come. And you've got to set your mind on the things of God. You've got to cut sin out of your life. You've got to model your life on Christ, his humility and love. You've got to bring it down 
into practicalities and make it work in your family situation, work situation. You can't opt for the new religions of the day, which could be called number one, churchianity. Churchianity is, you, you go to church, you say, yes sir, no sir, three bags full sir, and then you go home, and you, you're totally different when you're at home than you're at church. It's all nice, hello, how are you doing, are you okay, nice to see you, nice to see you. But it's all false. You're just playing church. You're not what you are at home. You're not a true Christian at home. Then there's not only churchianity, there's fakeianity. You, for whatever reason, are pretending to be a Christian. You're pretending to yourself. You're putting on an act before everybody else. But you know that it's a lie. That's not Christianity. Purposely putting on an act, purposely putting on a false facade of, uh, of that you are a Christian when you know that your life is just not right. But you're purposely faking it. Maybe you're just trying to hide the fact that you're not right. That's fakeianity, that's not Christianity. The only person that's going to be damaged in the end is yourself. You've got to face the fact that you're a fake. I'm not saying you're not a Christian, but at the moment you're living in a fake way. Okay, it, it's fake. You're not the real deal. Now you might get angry at me and you might say, who are you to say this, who are you to say that? You might get angry with me, I'm not getting angry with you. Uh, sorry, I'm not um, judging you. There, go, uh, go, but by the grace of God, go I. I'm just really tired, so forgive me. No, I'm not judging you. We can all fall into the trap of being fake. We can all tr fall into the trap of formality. Just going through the rota, going through the routine of religion. We can all fall into the trap of fakeianity, where we fall into sin, but we're just now faking it and pretending that we're not in sin, but we are in sin. And God wants us to be real. Then there's hardianity. Maybe it's too tough for you. Maybe you've been getting in a difficult situation and it, it's really, really tough. And you just think, well, I, I give up. And so you go on coming to church, but you've really given up. You've given up living for God, really. You're not on fire like you used to be. And that's no good. What we need is Christianity, all in all. A Christianity where we love Jesus, a Christianity where we're passionate about him. A Christianity where we're thinking of heavenly things. A Christianity where we cut the bad things out of our lives. A Christianity that seeks to model our life on our Saviour and follow his humility and love. A Christianity that seeks to work it out with the wife or with the husband. Work it out with our friends. Work it out with our children. Work it out in the situation of our workplace or wherever God has put us, we work it out, we will be real and we will be demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit in that situation. That is practical Christianity. I'm going to sing uh, my favourite song. He is Lord he is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen 
from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. We're going to pray. Father God, we thank you for your word today. Father, we pray that we would take these words and apply them to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to be the men and women you want us to be in our generation. Help us to rise to the task and to be all that you want us to be. Bless each person represented by this video, Lord, and the previous one. May those who come and listen, may their lives be transformed. And may they find you in Jesus' name. May they be encouraged in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm very, very tired. Forgive me. I'm almost uh, ready to go to sleep. So it's good to be with you. Thank you for listening to the sermon. I hope it's blessing. I hope it's giving you some spiritual food to meditate on. Hope it encourages you. So thank you for all your support. Thank you for all your love. And we value your prayer. We value your encouragement. So God bless you. And, and may God be with you. God bless.